Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting equation with complex numbers. So we have e to the power 2z plus e to the power z plus 1 equals 0 and we are going to solve for z. What else can you solve for, right? So let's go ahead and see how we can solve a problem like this. We have an exponential equation that kind of looks non-standard because if we had a single e to the power something like this, think about this equation, we could probably just set it equal to negative one, so on and so forth. Or if we had this instead, right, then again, we could just isolate e to the power 2z and then write this as an exponential. In other words, we need to complexify negative one and that can be done using Euler's formula. So let's go ahead and talk about Euler's formula real quick. By the way, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. If you like algebra, number theory, and trigonometry problems, go ahead and check out my other channel, Cyber Math, Cyber with an S. Great, so let's quickly talk about uh, what Euler said. So if you have a number, any number, it can basically be written as r times e to the i theta. And e to the i theta is an expression of something trigonometric added to something else trigonometric, but there's an i inside it too. So e to the i theta, and it's a beautiful, beautiful equation, by the way, e to the i theta can be written as cosine theta plus i sine theta. So there's a relationship between the exponentials and the trigonometric functions. And of course, i is involved. It can't get any better, can it? So by using this, we can pretty much write it. So what is R though? R is the modulus, or it's also known as the absolute value, right? Modulus or absolute value. And on the coordinate plane, it basically represents the distance from zero. So if you have a complex number Z, then its distance from zero is given by the absolute value or just R. And theta is the angle, by the way, these are called real and imaginary axes. And this is called the Argand plane, I guess it's the name of the guy who found it. I can't remember exactly, but that's how it's spelled because when I say argon, people say, oh, is th there's no D there, right? There's a D at the end. Well, maybe it's silent, who knows? So this is the plane that we use for plotting complex numbers as a vector or as a point, whatever. But that's those are the important components. So you need to know two things. You need two pieces of information, R and theta. So in that sense, negative one can be written as follows because negative one, can actually be uh, plotted as here. And the reason behind that is its imaginary part is zero. In other words, it's a real number, right? That's why it's on the real axis. And of course, its distance from zero is gonna be one unit, right? And the angle, which is the more important part here, is the theta or the argument, it's also known as the argument, is starts here, and uh, oops, that's not what I meant starts here and ends here. And that's given by pi radians. We need to write in radians because this formula works in radians and not in degrees, right? So pi is just the principal argument. Of course, you can expand it by adding multiples of two pi, by subtracting multiples of two pi, so on and so forth. So negative one can be written as e to the power i pi. But that's not the equation we have. So it's not that simple. So what are we supposed to do, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at this equation from another perspective. e to the 2z plus e to the z plus 1 equals 0. First of all, notice that e to the power 2z can be written as e to the power z squared. Awesome. That tells us that, hey, by using substitution, this can be turned into a quadratic equation. Yes, this is one of those equations which can be turned into quadratic. Let's go ahead and call e to the power z w another complex number. Right? So this becomes w squared plus w plus 1 equals 0. Now, there's a couple different ways to solve this problem. I'm going to show you, I think, both. Uh, and one of the methods is just using the quadratic formula, which kind of makes sense, right? So the quadratic formula tells us that w is negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4ac, which is 4, divided by 2a, which is 2. That's going to be negative 1 plus minus the square root of negative 3 divided by 2. Uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem. How do you square root a negative number? 
in the complex world, everything is possible. You can write it as square root of three multiplied by i. So now this becomes a complex number and there are two values for w. So which one are we gonna use? You need to use both because there should be two solutions, right? Okay, how do you go about solving them? Well, just set w values to e to the z and you should be good to go. e to the z, let's just start with this one and then we can look at the negative one later or it's just gonna be super similar and you can just do it yourself. And I wanna write this as negative one half plus root three over two i. Now these numbers should be familiar to you if you've done, if you've done a little bit of trigonometry with the right triangle or maybe on the unit circle. We gotta be on the unit circle because here we have a cosine value. By the way, this is cosine theta in case you didn't know. And this is sine theta. And why am I saying that where is the r? r is one. Because if you look at the absolute value of e to the z, you're gonna realize, hey, the absolute value of e to the z is one. So I don't need to worry about taking out the r if you know what I'm talking about. If not, go ahead and check out the lecture videos and ask questions. That's the best way to learn. So we got the cosine and sine value. So can we find the angle? Yes, I mean, at least we can find the principal value, right? So think about it this way. If cosine was one half and sine was root three over two, then we would be talking about 60 degrees or pi over three radians, right? But that's not the case because uh, we have a negative cosine value, which means you need to just reflect it along the y-axis. Of course, you don't want to change the cosine, you don't want to change the sine, you just want to flip the cosine and that can be done. So here it's one half, here it's negative one half. In both cases, the sine value is root three over two. You get the idea? Great, so what does this mean? This means that our angle is actually pi minus pi over three, which can be given as two pi over three. That's how I usually find it. Just find the, um, what's it called, reference angle between zero and pi over two, and then just reflect it, flip it, extend it, I don't know, whatever, to make it work. Okay, good, so now we can write this number as follows. We have e to the power z equals negative one half plus root three over two i, and now that can be written as cosine of two pi over three plus i sine two pi over three. But how am I gonna set an exponential to this? Again, Euler's formula. Of course, this means e to the power i theta, and theta is two pi over three. But I gotta be very careful because I'm allowed to add multiples of two pi, so I, should, I can say two and pi is added so that we can cover all the solutions. So from here, you can safely say that z equals i times two pi over three plus two n pi. For example, if n is zero, z is i times two pi over three. If n is one, so on and so forth, you can pretty much find the solutions. The other one, which is e to the power z, equals the negative, they're both gonna be negative, and guess what that does? That brings you to the third quadrant, so you just need to extend it like this, and that's just gonna be pi plus pi over three, and that's gonna be four pi over three, and you're gonna be doing the exact same thing. Make sense? It should be fairly, uh, fairly easy. Now let's go ahead and check Wolfram Alpha, see if he can provide us some solutions. Ta-da-da-da, yes he can. But why does it look different from ours? That's for you to find out, because this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.